What's going on guys? We are officially live and if you're watching this on the live, make sure you guys go ahead and comment with your question right now and if you're watching this on the replay, leave a comment with a question that you'd like us to answer in a future live call. In today's live training, we got the man Austin here who is the owner of a live print shop, an operation that he started out of his bedroom, out of, actually out of your garage, garage. your mom's garage, yep. your parents' garage. 13 years ago and has now grown it to become a multi-million dollar print shop servicing retail brands, boutiques, startup clothing brands, and everybody in between. Austin, thanks for coming on today, man. Hey, thanks so much, John. Always Dude. good to see you guys. Yeah, so today we want to talk and share about four things that entrepreneurs need to know before they start printing and then three things that they need to have in place in order to elevate their brand's game, right? Absolutely. I mean, my background is in screen printing. And um, you know, I always look at why do some orders go smoother than other orders? Why are some things easier? Why are you know some people easier to work with? And things um, you know just make sense sometimes. And I kind of broke it down into four things that you need to know if you're going to order screen printing. Mm -hmm. But before we jump into that, the number one thing I would say for anybody that's trying to grow, grow their brand is you got to invest in being organized. Mm -hmm. I mean, Almost I, I see what you guys yep. do here. Like you can't just jump in and say, "Oh, I'm going to do this today." Like there's no, you know, there's nothing that's going to make up for a lack of planning. I agree. I completely 100% agree. And for those of you guys that are on this live chat right now, we got we got Fresh Diamond Inc. He's starting up a board shop. So he hopes the information will be helpful. It will be helpful. I promise you. Stick, stay tuned for what we're about to share in the next few minutes. We got a Sam Glasglow. We specialize in outdoor apparel and surfwear. So a lot awesome. of uh, a lot of West Coast type of uh, mm -hmm. beach stuff. So Austin, I want you to share with the people watching like how you got your start. I, I, yeah, we, absolutely. We talked about it before, but this is a really cool story. I, I really want um, to share. You know, I mean, the, the catalyst that put it all together was one day I was walking to school and I had, you know, done all my chores and everything to save up money to buy t-shirts and i walk in and i see a kid wearing the same t-shirt as me and i'm like oh man i thought this was i thought it was special but then i realized oh anybody can go to the mall and get the same shirt and it just kind of started this idea of man i wanted to make something creative i want to get involved in this and then i was a sophomore in high school so i'm starting to draw and everything and um, a friend of mine lets me borrow his camera so i'm starting to take photos and i you know get stuck in a typing class that has photoshop so all this is starting to come together and then i had the idea you know what i'm going to go make t-shirts Mm -hmm. So I got a small uh, little job every day after school, driving, you know, 30 minutes, go to make minimum wage to, to clean screens in a shop. Mm -hmm. um, that was a messy. I mean, the, it was so messy. Literally, the whole the whole washout room was about the size of a bathroom. Oh, it was a bathroom because right, right. there was still a toilet next to it. <laughs> and there was a washout booth. And I go in, the guy hands me an apron and he says, hey, we're going to we're going to wash screens. Here's mm -hmm. how to do it. OK, go for it. I'm in there pressure washing screens and I walk out. And I'm completely wet, I'm uh, drenched, because right. the, the hose was leaking. Right. And then when I go and I'm like, okay, and he said, you won't be back here tomorrow, huh? And I said, yeah, I'll be back. He goes, oh, okay, then I'll, I'll put the new hose on. And so he had, he had a bad hose as a test, and I'm drenched. And I was like, yeah, I'll be back, you know, oh, challenge accepted. And so I showed up every day for three months just cleaning screens, you know, at a little shop. And um, I just kind of had the feeling that, like, I was on a mission. Mm. Like, like, this was my undercover mission, you know, mm. like, I was here to learn. I didn't really care how dirty the work was. But I was here to learn about this because I wanted to do mm. it. And after three months, I, you know, convinced my parents to help me borrow $3,000, and mm -hmm. I bought a little manual press, and then it was off. And then from mm. there... I realized, you know, I'm still in high school. Um, you, you can't not go to school. Like, like yeah, they make you, you show go up. School, right? You got to go know, to high like school. As much as you <laughs> don't want to go, they make you show up. Uh -huh. And then I realized that, hey, there's there's like 70 teachers in my high school that are all in charge of clubs. Like, mm -hmm. were you in any any clubs? In, I was. In I was actually in the hip hop club. We were doing some freaking breaking. <laughs> <You know, laughs> were this they one. were they doing? Uh, oh, you gotta pass it back. Uh, uh. Oh, oh. <laughs> I was also a b-boy. Oh, yeah, right, yeah, cool, cool. yeah. Hip hop clip. Hip hop clip. Break dance makes good for good screen printers. But um, no, I realized like, dude, I, the government makes me go to school every day. Mm -hmm. I have potential customers that are sitting in there every day. You know, mm -hmm. they have to order from somebody. And I thought, why don't they order from me? Mm -hmm. You know, I'll print their t-shirts. So I did what every good entrepreneur did: is uh, I bribed them. Mm -hmm. I, sh I went to, uh, you know, I got my license. I showed up every day to Starbucks. I spent twelve dollars. Because it was like six dollars for a frappuccino, I bought two of them. One for me to drink, one for me to go find a teacher on the list and show up and say, "Hey, you don't know me. Here's a caramel frappuccino. Let me print your uh, your t-shirts for your club." Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I that, that worked out pretty good. Right. Yeah, almost. I can't think of a single teacher who turned down the caramel frappuccino. Like right. all of them, yeah, everybody, like, everybody right, wanted I'll talk it. To you. <laughs> like, oh, I'll talk to you. And then um, that was the first time in my life I got straight A's because mm -hmm. my teacher said. 
if you want our t-shirt orders, you got to get an A in our class. Mm. So all of a sudden, I, my motivation went up, and I joined yearbook clubs. I got a list of every teacher that did a club. I'd go, you know, shoot the, the photos for the yearbook group club, and they're like, hey, you know what you guys need? You guys need some t-shirts. You guys need to all match. Yeah, you guys yeah. need to look good. And uh, I did that. So, you know, my, my sophomore year, we did, or my junior year, we did a whole $400 in sales. Mm. But then I got organized. That was your junior year. That was, yeah, that was my junior, junior year. year. You know what? Maybe into sophomore year. Sophomore year. Into sophomore $400 year. in sales. $400 year. in sales. Yeah. I owe my parents, you know, $2,700, mm -hmm. you know. To repay the, to, to the repay. I'm not even yeah. close. Yeah. And, right. and then it was kind of that moment where I said, am I going to take this serious? And I think that's where everybody is. It's like, you're in the hobby moment. You're like, okay, I'm doing this because it's fun. I want to wear shirts. And then you have to make the decision, like, am I going to do this? Mm -hmm. Like, am I, am I going to go all in? And that was the decision I said, okay, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to get strategic about it. Because mm -hmm. before I had tactics. Yeah. And yeah. here's the difference when you're marketing your company. Tactics, tac tactics are good on small term, but if you don't have a strategy that the tactics add up that are taking you to where mm -hmm. you want to go, tactics might take you all yep, over the place. Yep. Oh, I'm going to do cold calls today. I'm, I'm going to give Starbucks emails. to a teacher. Yeah, yeah I'm going to send yeah. Starbucks to a teacher. I'm going to, like, you got to have a plan. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember setting it up all summer and writing it all down and figuring out my plan. I said, hey, I'm, you know, I'm going to join your book club. I'm going to get a list of all the teachers. I lined up my day, you know, mm -hmm. I lined it up and I was like, I'm going to go hit this teacher, this teacher, this teacher. I've, I've already given them Starbucks, right, you know? Right. So now I kind of put strategy to the, to the marketing tactic. And I remember like my, my uh, sophomore year, you know, or my junior year, we did, you know, Fifteen thousand dollars in sales. It was cool. So four hundred sophomore, fifteen yep, 50, grand, 000. fifteen thousand. And, and even that, that was still, you know, yeah. was, oh, it was okay. But my senior year, I had half schedule, mm. so I get to leave mm. at eleven o'clock mm. every day. Mm. So I got more time. I get really organized. You know, I kind of get some orders under my belt. My, my whole, I gotta tell you, my whole sophomore year and half of junior year, I refunded every order. Really? Oh, wow. Everything was messed up. Really? Shirts okay. weren't washing mm. good. Ink colors were off. Um, you know. Designs that were supposed to be on the front ended up on the back. Right. Like, I had no system, right. you know. I had no system for printing T-shirts, and so I kept as as I would stumble through orders, I kept kind of putting a system together. And um, by my senior year, I was ready. Hmm. I showed up. I did five thousand dollars in sales the first day. Oh, wow. I had it lined up. I yeah. knew ROTC needed to order. Mm -hmm. I knew orchestra needed to order. I made my rounds, um, and then my, by my senior year, we did forty-nine thousand dollars in sales. Forty-nine and. Senior year. Senior year. And I had more time to print. Yeah, so I yeah. had more time. I was, I was going in. I was talking to my church and other uh, people I knew, printing orders and everything like that. And the crazy thing is now over six of my teachers are now principals mm, all over the valley. So and now you own the city. Well, no, no, not at all. I mean, no, but relationships <laughs> yeah, are key. Right, you know, right. like my junior and senior year, I started looking at teachers as they weren't teachers anymore. Mm -hmm. They were customers. Yep. So you, you you can't mess around in their class. Mm. You can't, you know, you can't be like, you know, you, you can't show up and be that kid. Yep. Like, I have to now, if they're your teacher, you got to service them. Yep. You got to take yep. care of them. And so I started building relationships. So that, you know, I'm like, I need to know these people. Mm -hmm. I need to mm -hmm. be respectful to them. I need mm -hmm. to start doing all this, you know, putting it together. And then, you know, now, yeah, on a regular, I'm talking to principals. I'm like, hey, you were my Spanish teacher. Mm -hmm. or You were, you know, my yeah. English teacher. And they're excited, you know, because they were a part of our growth, yeah. growth getting started. And so that's one thing is if, you, if you're going to do a brand, if you're doing clothing brand, whatever it is, like, you have to be organized. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think you have to have a plan. Definitely. And, that, and I think uh, for everybody that's tuning in right now, as you guys know, we're talking about screen printing and the things that you need to know before you start printing and the three things that you're going to need to have in place to really elevate your brand. So for those of you guys that are joining us, Angel, uh, he appreciates the information. Hopefully created designs. Thanks again for joining us again on this one. And we have Rick and Slow Feek, Slow Feek 15. Man, so one of the things that you just said right now was, uh, was pretty key to me too, um, is in, in regards to relationships, right? Mm -hmm. So whenever you're just getting started, your Rolodex of people, your network isn't, isn't really big or any size unless, mm -hmm. you, unless you already have been doing it like somebody in your family was doing printing and now you have like a Rolodex open to you, right? But for a lot of people that are just getting started like Austin did and like everybody on this channel really is, mm -hmm. your, your Rolodex is starting from, the, from day one. So you have to think about how are you going to build a relationship with those people, but then how are you going to keep that relationship for years to come, of right? So, so Austin made a key point here in, in regards to treating people, like even the people that you're meeting with respect, so they know that, you know, this guy services me, like I can go back to him year over year, and you have, re you, you have those repeat clients, and I think that's key for your growth as you guys were going. So after high school... But, but that's, that's another reason why, like, 
you know, a lot of people are shy. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are introverts. Yep. But y your reason why you're doing this has to be it has to be greater than your your insecurities. Yep. Because I only had you know six teachers a year, mm -hmm. but there was like seventy of them. So I had to go randomly walk into mm -hmm. teachers' class that I didn't know. I'm you know 15 years old. Mm -hmm. They're 40. They're 50 years old. And the only reason I overcame that is I just realized what I want to do is greater than how I'm you know than me being shy. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. that's why it's like. Hey, you can be shy and you can say you're an introvert. I mean, we all have those things, mm -hmm. but if your why becomes greater than your insecurities, yep. you'll go out and do it. Most I definitely. mean, you, yeah. you got to, you got to meet people. One of my favorite phrases is contacts turn into contracts. Mm -hmm. The more mm -hmm. people you get in your phone, the more people you get in your lineup, that's filling up your pipeline. Mm -hmm. And if you get a thousand people in your pipeline, you know, when you go to the spigot, a few orders will drip out every yep. day. Most and that simple. starts turning into consistent orders. So you gotta talk to a lot of people, you gotta email a lot of people, you gotta shake hands, kiss babies, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. just go meet people, be yep. friendly, be the kind of person that people wanna have as a friend, you know, mm -hmm. be very friendly. Mm -hmm. So what were you saying? So after high school, so, you, so now you got some orders under you. Yeah. Uh, do you move in right to your next location? What happens, how do you get to where you are right now? Yeah, no, the, I would say the scariest point in my life was, um, you know, the, the next two years after high school. Mm -hmm. I'm at school, I have to be there. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like my mm -hmm. life's kind of planned out for me. I got to go to school every day. But, you know, 19, 20 years old, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I did my first semester and a half of college. I, I, I hated it. Mm -hmm. I just, you know yeah, what I mean? It, just, it wasn't for me. I'm watching everybody there. Everybody is there because they want to, you know, do something or become something or learn something. And I kind of felt like I found what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Like, why am I doing this? I don't feel like it's connecting. I had a really hard time connecting with people in college, actually, because everybody's schedule yeah. is over. And in my free time, I'm not meeting people at college. Mm -hmm. I'm printing T-shirts in my parents' garage. And so I had just stuck with it and went. I remember sitting in my car, um, halfway through my second semester and I had a little notepad next to me and I had mm -hmm. eight orders on it. And I, I remember thinking, I'm either gonna get these eight orders done on time and make people happy, or I'm gonna go in and get an A and make my mom happy, but I can't do both. Mm -hmm. like, I was like, this is, this is too much, other. I gotta yeah. do one or the other. And so I remember promising myself, I said, if I leave right now, I'm not giving up. I can't mm -hmm. give up. I can't, you know, I, I mean, you know, I, if I, this has to become something so good that my mom won't be upset with me mm -hmm. about, you know, because I'm quitting college over. And I made that decision. I said, I'm not coming back. Mm -hmm. I, I, but then what I did every day to kind of convince my mom I was still going to school is I got up every day, 7 a.m. I got flyers printed and I just went out. Uh, uh, every hour I was supposed to be in school, I knocked on doors. I went business to business. You know, I called, I hit every construction and landscape company I could find and, and school and all these different things. And I said, I'm not coming home. I'm gonna leave at seven. I'm not coming home until 12 so that my mom thinks I was, I'm not gonna lie to her. If uh, she asked, I gotta tell her, but uh, as, as long as she still thinks uh, I'm, in, I'm going to college. And that started opening up doors that were outside of it. And then one of the days when I was doing that, I got a damage on my, one of my wheels, went to go get it fixed. And next door to the shop that had my wheels had a whole screen printing uh, setup. Mm. I'm, I'm over there pulling a squeegee manually and there's an auto press. And I'm looking in, I'm like, why is all this equipment in the shop and the doors are closed and mm -hmm. the lights are off? Mm. And I ended up calling this shop for you know three, four weeks in a row and found out this guy was pretty well off. He got into this as a hobby, went right into the whole setup, mm -hmm. uh, which was crazy, and um, actually was you know willing to get out of it. And so this is one of those things where right place, right, right time, time plan. He wanted to get out of it. He needed someone to take over the equipment, you know, on the payment plan. Um, his brother owned the the building, and his brother said, "Hey." Me and my brother are supposed to be running this big company. Mm -hmm. My brother is printing T-shirts in his spare time. Like we have a very big, successful company uh, downtown. He goes, if you take over this equipment, I'll give you a great deal on the lease. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, and he's like, it'll be two thousand dollars a month. And I'm like, that's a great deal. Like that's so much money. <laughs> like two thousand dollars a month. Uh -huh. But I was able to jump into about fifty thousand dollars of equipment for like a seven hundred dollar month payment. Wow. wow. And I was like. I gotta do it, yep. you know what I mean? So I talked to my parents, I'm like, hey, I'm going all in, and now I'll have a storefront, I'll have walk-in. And then another thing that happened, just things going on is one of the um, retail stores in the mall was going out of business. Mm -hmm. And I went to buy a little you know, table, and when I showed up, everything was still there. And the manager was like, hey, my job's done, you can have whatever you want. Oh. And so I called every guy I knew, we had a U-Haul, we were taking all the fixtures Whoa. down. And, and then you know, within, going, within the three month period, we went from being in my parents' garage to having, you know, uh, 2,500 square feet, mm. having retail fixtures, mm. started filling it up. And then from there, that was like, that was my boot that was, camp. That, that was your like, your actual yeah. takeoff moment. Yeah, it was takeoff, but it wasn't, I wouldn't say like, that wasn't success. Right, that right. was door opening. And then the next six years, 
I ate, slept, you know, I slept there. I like everything I did was at that shop. Mm. When my, when my, you know, before we got married, when my girlfriend wanted to go on a date, mm -hmm. hey, let's have a date. We're printing t-shirts. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. Like come over, like we're printing t-shirts. And uh -huh. it was six years of just printing, just grinding and away, barely making it by. I mean, right. every payroll was a miracle. Every time we made it through, and I learned, you know, my my, my pricing was off. My systems needed improvement. Um, there were so many things that I learned. That was that was my college. Yeah, yeah, you know? most definitely. I, I paid. I paid for that college yeah. and it was many times, you know, I was paying employees and the only reason I ate most of the time was because I still lived at home with mom and dad right. and yep. luckily mom still made dinner every day mm -hmm. yeah. and, and that was it. And then it was just grinding, grinding, figuring it out. Um, and then once we had kind of got it figured out, then it was, we started seeing growth and expansion. Most definitely. And I think, and I think that's also a really good reminder to everybody watching is that it is, it is a process of you figuring out and fine tuning what your brand mm -hmm. and, and your business is really going to be. Uh, it's going to take a few years, five, six years, to really start to see what it is going to be and to, for you to see a bigger vision. And then for you, mm -hmm. like you said, it was education. Just like everybody that's oh, just yeah. getting started, you're going to learn a lot. You're going to learn a lot, and that's why we do these kind of things, to mm -hmm. help you kind of overcome some of those obstacles so you can think a little bit further ahead and not have to do it you know, on your own. So for those of you guys coming in, we see Robin Lubin. Um, and then we have Agazi. And then we had... Um, Cash or credit mentality, that's right. Agazi said, you know, what's going to be, how are you going to take this payment, cash or credit? And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the mentality you got to have. You can't, you can't be scared if you're an introvert. Yeah. Um, so, so from here, so for instance, so now, now, now you're, now you figured out the business. Yeah. Let's fast forward till today's time. Now you're working with a lot of brands. You're working yeah. with hundreds of brands at any given time. Um, what's one of the things that brands need to know before they get into screen printing? Yeah, I mean, I want to break it down in, into four yep. things because if you're gonna, if this is gonna be, if this is gonna be your business. Mm -hmm. You know, if this this clothing brand, if you're looking at this clothing brand to add revenue to your life, to this eventually you want it to become your day job. You got to understand four major things that go into production, and when you understand these four things, uh, number one, you're gonna become your print shop's favorite customer. When you get things organized and you understand how it works, you're going to walk in and all of a sudden you're going to find yourself getting a little bit of extra, uh, extra treatment, getting a little bit treated because if you can present your order the easiest way possible so that they have all the information they need, they're going to be like, man, this guy's so easy to work mm -hmm. with. His stuff is always together. We know exactly what he wants. Um, he's, you know, it's, it doesn't take a lot of time. He knows what he wants. And so being precise and being decisive is, is huge. And mm -hmm. so to break it down, the number one thing that you need to know if you're ordering shirts and in the screen printing, you've got to get familiar with product. Mm -hmm. Like there's no excuse. Like if you're going to put a shirt on every single day, make every single, you know, Monday through Friday, try a new shirt on. Yep. Yep. Go online, order a next level shirt, a Bella Canvas shirt, a Gildan shirt, a Hanes shirt, a uh, District. Totally. Get familiar with your product because if you're going to sell your product to your customers, you need to become a user of it. Mm -hmm. Get familiar of how the fit goes. And to me, I learned that, you know, between a next level and a Bella Canvas shirt, the half inch uh, difference on the shoulder seam mm -hmm. is a game changer. Yep. If you're, yep. you know, if you're our size, you're 6'2", whatever, yep. if that cut is on that seam is too far in, it rides you in the mm -hmm. armpit and now you're kind of doing that uncomfortable yep. movement all the time. And if you you get a little bit more room on there, all of a sudden, oh, this feels good. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so you've got to really become familiar with the brands, next level, Bella Canvas, all style, um, and then familiar with the styles. Yep. You got to understand the difference between a cotton shirt and a polyester and a tribal, and, and not understand it from a you know a manufacturer's point mm -hmm. of view. But understand from it from how customer, you, from right? a customer's yeah. point yeah. of view. How does it fit? How does it feel? What colors does it come in? You know, why do they call some things vintage black, where it's kind of an off black, mm -hmm. and then you have a true black? Uh, if you're gonna, you know, if you plan on going out every day and uh, wearing a shirt, mm -hmm. use that as an opportunity to product test. Yep, most um, definitely. Wash know, test it. Wash yep, test it. Most, you know, yep. well, one of the things I always say is, hey, you're not allowed to walk around naked. You know, like <laughs> that's one of the rules. That's one of the things that keeps us in business. So every time you're wearing a shirt, use that as an opportunity to get familiar with brand, product, style, color. Um, just because you got to know, you mm -hmm. got to know what you want if you're going to walk in. If not, you're going to go in and a shop is going to try to sell you on a shirt that they make more money yep, on, yep. or sell you on a shirt that, for some reason, you know that they, they that's the preference of that guy, mm -hmm. you know, who's who's running or that girl. So the number one thing, you got to get familiar with product. Mm -hmm. So and you do that by wearing a shirt every day. Man, that's that's key right there, guys. As you're doing your research, finding the right mm -hmm. product fit for your market. Remember, in the last call, we talked about we talked uh, Agazi touched on how a 
somebody's body type may be different sizes, right? Like they don't necessarily always wear the, the large, they could, mm -hmm. or the extra large, they could fit large in other brands, right? So this is, this is where wearing the product and actually knowing which styles fit a certain way on you and might fit on, on, on another person will help you to elevate your brand because now you know this is who my brand's for and these are the styles that will fit and help them feel good in that shirt. And if you help your customer feel good, they'll want to promote it more Absolutely. and they'll want to wear it and they want to, they want to wear it more. They want to take care of it more. If it doesn't fit them well or, or they don't like it, they're going to wear it once or twice, not really care about it. And they're not going to tell their friends about it. Well, it doesn't even matter how cool the design is. Yep, you yep, know, some of, is. I, I've got true. shirts where I'm like, design looks so uh -huh. cool, colors good. But if I feel uncomfortable all day, yep. I'm not wearing that shirt. Exactly. Uh, the goal is, you know, most guys won't admit this, but sometimes we wear the same shirt two days in a row. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> the goal we don't is, wash it. We, we, we don't wash it. We, we want to wear it again. <laughs> so the goal is to, to choose a product that's so comfortable, that feels so good, that you want your shirt to be your customer's favorite shirt in their closet. Mm -hmm. Some mm -hmm. guys have had shirts in their closet, you know, for, for five years, for, yep. for 10 years, and they just feel comfortable in it. And your goal is when your customer pur purchases your, your T-shirt, it's not just looking good, it's their next favorite shirt. Mm -hmm. It's the kind of shirt that fits so good that they call and they say, hey, do you got this in black? Do you yep. got this in red? you got mm -hmm. this in white? Because I literally just want to feel this good every day because yep. clothes make you feel a certain way. They do. And that's yep. why we design them. That's why we print them. It's not just about make money or revenue. It's about how a, you know, a customer feels. Well, exactly. So going right into that, you've got to get familiar with your brand and color. Uh, when someone says, hey, I want a red shirt, that's not enough. Mm -hmm. Like that's really not enough. We got to be more precise. I wanted, you know, when a customer says, "Hey, I want the next level 3600 and I want that in purple rush or mm -hmm. I want that in red." That is an exact item and an exact color because there might be five shades of red. Yep. There yep. might be bright red, cardinal red. And so when you're ordering, you're getting your stuff together, be precise. Be precise about what shirt you want because if not, you're going to end up with a shirt. Yep, that looks somewhat like it, but it's, it's a shirt. <laughs> yeah. it, it's red. It's some shade of red. Is it fire engine red? Is it orange red? Is it cardinal red? Who knows what you're going to get because yep. if you're not precise, you're going to you're going to get what you get. Right, yep. And so, number one, get your brand and your color figured out. Figure out what colors look good, feel good. Um, you know, if if you keep going to that same color in the closet every day then make that your color make, mm -hmm. because it feels good and fits comfortable. So number one, get your brand and color down. Number two, get your size list together. Mm. I've had customers that say, I need to order 100 shirts and we'll send them an invoice as a quote, 100, and they pay for it. I'm like, hey, what sizes right. would you right. like those in? <laughs> One of each. And, and one customer said, oh, I didn't realize I'm supposed to decide that. Right. Oh, you want me to decide that? Okay. Like, like, get you five of each. Yeah, <laughs> you want five of each? Do you want 100 smalls? Like, and it be decisive because mm -hmm. here's here's the here's the real truth and this is something everybody needs to know if you don't make the decision someone else will mm -hmm. and the problem is someone else has different they have different things that they like they have mm -hmm. different preferences um they they might think this shade of red looks good when you hate that shade mm -hmm. of red when you you know when you hate it and if you don't make the decision someone else is going to make mm -hmm. it so be precise about the brand of item, the color, and then your size run. And you do that by getting familiar with how it fits. Mm -hmm. And then looking at, first looking at everybody you know. All you right. know, if majority of people you know wear a large, then make 60% of your print run in large. Mm -hmm. Let's do 10 small, 10 medium, 40 larges, mm -hmm. 10 extra large. You know, because you don't want, e even number sizes is not actually great. Mm -hmm. yep. Because if all of a sudden you run out of smalls and you're stuck with 5.2x, 5, 5.3x, five, mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. Yep. So this is where you got to know the brand. You got to you know start talking to people and getting them the shirts to try on. Mm -hmm. So once you get your brand, your color down, get your size run down, this is going to automatically make sure before printing happens, we're choosing the right items and the right color and the right quantities. Now we're halfway there. That's the start, guys. That's that's the, that's your tip number one and two, right? That's tip number, tip one, number and two. one and two of four that we're going to share, and then three other key things that you guys want to check out. Uh, let's go to the comment section. If you guys are watching live right now, leave your questions. Any Anything about screen printing, embroidery, production, uh, colors, we're going to be touching on some of these things as well, but just leave your questions right now so we can answer them in real time for you guys. Um, and Caesar and Agassi, if you guys see any questions, just, just holler them out um, in case we miss them here as we're, as, as we're talking. But yeah, the key, is to, uh, the key is to get those samples, guys. Get those samples mm -hmm. and become familiar for what it is that you want. It also helps in the case that for whatever reason, the print shop is backed up a few weeks. And now you've been going to that guy for your for your red mm -hmm. shirts, right? Only he knows which ones he's been ordering. But then <laughs> you go to a different print shop and you're like, hey, I want the red. And then it comes out completely different. And now your customers are like, yeah, this isn't what I wanted, right? 100%. I, when you get these down, 
it doesn't matter what shop you go mm -hmm. to. Yep. You know, you can go to any shop. You can order online and feel confident because now you know what product. You're saying, I want this product, this color, this style number. Here's my size run. It, it really, what it does is it builds your confidence and your knowledge as, as mm -hmm. the, the as brand builder, yep. as the entrepreneur. And so uh, we want you to jump into number three. Let's do it. Number three is, man, it's so, 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 so important to understand color. Mm. You got to understand color. This, and is, this a, is color on printing, right? Yes. Honestly, anything, color in anything, anything, in anything. And if you're colorblind, uh, the numbers please, help. The, yeah, there's a number if you're colorblind. Honestly, if you're colorblind, go, get, go get someone else. else. <laughs> get someone else to make the decision for you. The reason why Pantone and coloring is so important is here. Here's a crazy idea. Blue does not exist. Mm -hmm. Blue doesn't yep. exist. Red doesn't. Orange doesn't exist. Those are too general. Mm -hmm. Those are too vague. You can't come in and how say. How many blues are there? Right oh there? my goodness! How many pages of <laughs> blues see, do we got? Let's see how many blues are in the show. Show the camera. Look, look, look at this. We've got we've got greenish blues. We've got bluish blues. We've we got, got purple blues. <laughs> you know, we've got every kind of blue. We got whitish blues. We got pastels. Um, just saying, I want blue on a black shirt isn't enough. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like because what happened is what happened. Someone else is going to decide for yep. you. Someone else is going to pick a, a shade for you. Someone else is in it. And, and they're going to kind of eyeball it based on maybe what you sent them for your artwork. Exactly. It's not going to be what you want. Sometimes they won't even eyeball it. Right. Sometimes they'll just be like, blue, we're doing blue. We're doing the same blue that we did from the previous job so we don't have to clean, clean the squeegees. We're just going to take the same blue from the... And, and that's not what you want because here, here's why we're putting this together. When, as a customer, there's your expectations. Your expectations fall within this channel. Mm -hmm. The only way you're going to be happy is the, the product needs to be on point mm -hmm. or it needs to exceed expectations. Yep. It can't be below expectations, but also it can't be off to the right or left. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you get a red shirt that has a blue print on it, cut, you know, the, the printer looks and says, yep, we did it. Yep. We fulfilled it. Yep. But that's such a vague area that could be too, too you know, the color of the, the print could be off, the mm -hmm. color of the shirt could be off. Technically, it could work, yep. but it's not hitting the customer's expectation and exceeding it. Yep. And that's where print shops get in trouble. And that's mm -hmm. why print shops say, hey, this is our policy. You approved it. You, you approved you, the artwork. It's, it's yours. Yeah. Yep. Yes, technically that makes sense, but you're not building long-term relationship with your customer. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to mm -hmm. build a long-term relationship with your customer, you have to understand why and what they're doing. You have to ask them these questions. Mm -hmm. You've got to say, mm -hmm. hey, there's a lot of blues. I need you to pick one. Yep. There's a lot of shirt colors. I'm going to send you a link. I want you to pick one out. Mm -hmm. And so that's, I think that's what's been, uh, you know, a huge thing for mm -hmm. us um, in our business is we weren't satisfied with vague answers. Yeah. We made sure we asked customers the question. And you know what? Yes, it takes a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. But in the end, I want to ask the customer, why are you doing this? Is mm -hmm. this for a, a church camp? Is this mm -hmm. for a clothing brand? Is this a brand for Fortune 500 mm -hmm. company that needs to be 185C yep. Coca-Cola Red? Yep. And I ask them these questions because I'm setting the parameters of expectation mm -hmm. so that I know we can hit the point. And then what we want to do is we want to exceed expectation by having the order done a little bit sooner, mm -hmm. throwing in a few extra shirts, mm -hmm. um, you know, making sure I, we just did this on another order. Customer ordered shirts. We threw in a hat. Mm -hmm. They're yep. excited about it. Hey, we're ready for the next hat order. Mm -hmm. We know yep, we yep, set them yep. up for, for uh -huh. hat order, but we in some point exceeded expectations and exceeding expectations turns into positive reviews, mm -hmm. which tells the world, hey, these guys are someone good to work with. Yeah, most definitely. And like you mentioned, guys, if you guys are wanting, this is Austin. He's the owner of a live, of a live print shop. Uh, again, they started this about 13 years ago out of his garage, yeah. and now they're servicing hundreds of brands every on any given week. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you guys are watching this and want to do business with them, they're also offering free neck labels for the community, Absolutely, guys. Yeah. Make sure you guys mention that you watched this video, you came through uh, this channel, and mentioned from the ground up mm -hmm. on the uh, as a coupon code, yeah. and you guys get free. Uh, free neck labeling on your on your orders and to get the quote just head on over to the alive print shop website and you guys can enter your information right there as you see on screen and they will take care of you guys and and to expand on the PMS color coding guys this is this is this is really key especially this is going to be especially key when you guys want to start matching colors right so you have a t-shirt maybe you're doing some some headwear mm -hmm. some jacket and your design you want it to look the same across embroidery files across screen printing across maybe vinyl printing or any other type of graphic Absolutely. printing you want to have the exact color code for your colors because this helps the shop decide on which type of thread they're going to use which mm -hmm. type of, of vinyl they want they should they should be picking out so color coding your brand's designs with PMS code is gonna be key, guys. So make sure that you pick this up. This is called a Pantone Swatch Book. 
You can order it online. It's about sixty bucks, right? It's about a hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah, it's new, about hundred twenty. You can buy used yeah. ones. Yeah, you can buy used ones on eBay, yeah. or you can go directly through their site. Uh, we're gonna link it in, in in the description too, if you guys want to pick one of these up. But honestly, this thing right here is gonna mm -hmm. save you so much time and headache when it comes to production. Absolutely. Especially as you guys come across making product lines for different things like mm -hmm. sublimation, embroidery files. If you're printing your own fabric, like all of this stuff, this swatch book is gonna help it match across different mediums so this right here is key you got it man yep. you got to be precise if you're gonna you know if you're gonna build your clothing brand your business whatever you have to be precise because here's the crazy thing that we were talking about mm -hmm. earlier if you don't make these decisions someone else is making them for you right and the problem is like what's an example oh well i mean was, we were talking about this yeah. about um if you guys watch the show undercover uh undercover boss mm -hmm. and i think it was the brand o'neill and mm -hmm. the, the boss went undercover and you know he's going in the retail stores and he goes to their print shop and he goes and the guy's like oh i'm gonna show you how to print t-shirts and then the guy has a template and it's literally a t-shirt with a logo on it and they showed it to the camera and he's and the, and the owner goes well what uh what position do you put on the t-shirt and the press hopper said, you know what? They don't tell us that. So we just decide what looks good. <laughs> and he said, they don't tell you that? He said, yeah, some, some jobs have the, you know, um, dimension specs, some don't. He goes, well, what color? He goes, well, sometimes they give us color, sometimes they don't. So here's the thing. A brand like O'Neill, a world-class company, mm -hmm. Guess who's making the decision? Not the designer, mm -hmm. not the owner. The press operator right, is the making the decision. That, <laughs> the guy that's just squeegeeing the, it off. The last guy. He, and this is the thing. If you don't provide these specs to your print shop mm -hmm. or wherever you're ordering, Guess who's making the decision? <laughs> the press operator. The press <laughs> operator is making it. The designer is uh -huh. making it. Uh, anybody but you is making it. Yep. And the problem is, it might not be what you want. Yep. Yep. And so that's why you know I'm so passionate about this because I know if I want to make a customer happy, I gotta understand what they want. Mm -hmm. I've gotta you know I, I've been practicing like mind reading, but right. it's not very good. Right. So <laughs> instead, like, hey, and I'm like, you, what I, color do you want? How about pick from this <laughs> from this color chart because I can't read your mind. Yeah. And you know this is coming from a, the, the production's point. Right. Right. You, the, the easiest, funnest customers to work with are the customers that are precise. Right, yep. And some people might complain, oh, they're picky. No, I love picky customers mm -hmm. because I just want to know what you want. Mm -hmm. If you can tell me what shirt you want, what color, what sizes, what Pantone you want, I know that I'm going to feel confident watching a thousand shirts being printed, that they're going to be happy with this because mm -hmm. we, we hit all the, you know, yep. all yeah. the points, we checked all the boxes. And then, you know, when we're doing our inspection, we know the customer's going to be happy with mm -hmm. this order. Most definitely. And let's take it to some comments real quick, guys. So we have, uh, we have Kevin from Florida. Kevin, thanks for watching all the way from Florida, man. Jelani, how do you compare digital printing versus screen printing in terms of quality and cost and which one works best for you? Ooh, this that, that's... Yeah. This is that, kind of an open-ended question. This, yeah, there's yeah. so much. Yeah, like, yeah. there's so much. Here's the thing you got to understand, just the basics about screen printing and um, digital printing. Digital printing is printing with the CMYK cartridge. Cyan, mm -hmm. magenta, yellow, black, uh, and white. Um, that's what your printer at home is printing. Mm -hmm. The problem with that, CMYK can't Pantone match. Mm -hmm. yep. It can't. I mean, you can get as close as you can, but CMYK is, is outside of like RGB, mm -hmm. and it can only make the shades of those colors coming together, where in screen printing, we're using actual yes. inks. Yep. We're mixing in concentrates. We can achieve any color on here on the Pantone book, plus fluorescent colors, plus mm -hmm. other stuff. Mm -hmm. So if you want Tiffany blue, mm -hmm. we can mix that ink up, and you can print a print run what is consistently the vibrant thing. Tiffany oh. blue. Mm -hmm. Digital printing. If you've ever printed out 50 you know, pictures at your home printer, mm -hmm. you can see the color variation yep. in it. You can see that you know, the printer is laying down these other colors. And so there's some amazing things about DTG mm -hmm. printing. It's really great when you, you need items fast. Mm -hmm. It's really great when you're going to Disneyland and you need two t-shirts. Yep. But if you're putting out a quality brand that you want to last and feel good, there's just some tried and true things about screen printing mm -hmm. that the consistency, the washability, uh, and the cost mm -hmm. are all better. Almost the, definitely. The downside is screen printing is set up to do volume. Yep. 24, 36, 144. Um, that's usually the you know the parameters that screen printing happens because there's a lot of work. Yep. There's a lot of things that, that that go into. Someone has to make the the screen, which is the stencil, and they've got mm -hmm. to make one for each color in your design. They have to go through and, and spend the time the colors, matching yep. the colors. They've got to run a test print setup. So it is labor intensive until you set up, and then it becomes really efficient at large quantities. 
DTG is amazing because we can come in like today. We can mm -hmm. say, here's the design I made. Let's print one out. We're good. It's not set up for, for large uh, volume, mm -hmm. but it's set up to do something fast. It's great for sampling. And so I would say you always want to approach it from a crawl, walk, run. Mm -hmm. If you're just getting started, go with DTG. You can crawl, you can do a few mm -hmm. items. It doesn't take a huge investment. Once you start getting customers picking up your, you know, your brand, Okay, maybe we're going to start walking. Maybe we're going to do mm -hmm. one, one, you know, our, our most popular shirt, we're going to order 50 of them. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. we're going to do that. And then once that takes off, then you want to run and just probably switch, you know, over to screen print and do large print runs. And that way stuff is in hand, in stock, so you can ship it to your customers as fast as possible. Well, definitely, guys. And we're actually doing a video collaboration, which is coming on this channel within the next week or two. We're going to link it up on here when it's ready, and we'll also be letting you guys know in the community posts as well as newsletters. Mm -hmm. So if you guys haven't signed up to our newsletters, make sure you subscribe by clicking the links that are going to be in the description or after this video goes live. Um, so now we're, uh, now there's... Let's, let's touch on one more question. Somebody has, Angel says, what about embroidery and screen print and t-shirt items? On non-t-shirt items. On non-t-shirt items. I'm interested in automatic machines that can do multicolored designs and personal artwork. Well, here, here's the thing about screen printing. Screen printing is designed for flat. Mm -hmm. So the t-shirt's flat piece of fabric, the hoodie, the tank top, it's designed to print on a flat surface. Once you go into embroidery, there's a few things or when you get into um, other items that are non-t-shirts, where embroidery is dramatically better. Mm. When you're doing a polo, embroidery looks really oh, professional. Yeah. Uh, it looks awesome. When you're doing any sort of shell jacket, so you're talking about a winter jacket, mm -hmm. a uh, polyester or a nylon jacket, that, that fabric would melt when the ink on the screen printing needs to hit the temperature. Yeah. So you want to switch over to embroidery because you don't have to put, the, you don't have to put um, uh, heat to you know to the mm -hmm, item you mm -hmm. um, you can just directly embroider through multiple layers of fabric and then when you go to headwear we exclusively do embroidery mm -hmm, on headwear mm -hmm. uh, the machines are set up for embroidery to be able to go around the curved surface of a hat and so embroidery is definitely way, the way to go with a lot of non-items um, and then there's also a third process everybody you know knows about screen printing and embroidery um, I think you guys are working with yep. Supercolor. Supercolor. Supercolor is changing the game. Oh, they are. They Supercolor are. is changing the game, making a high quality. Because a lot of people hate vinyl. They mm -hmm. hate putting vinyl on. Supercolor is doing this new digital type printing that you can heat apply yep. to, to jackets, bags, uh, hats, hats yep. all kinds of stuff. And the quality is amazing. Oh, yeah, it's nuts. It's, it's great. Yeah, it's the next level. It's, I mean, we've been using it like crazy. And we've used it on, you know, um, jerseys for, you know, for some of the, like, world's top tennis players. Mm -hmm. We did all their jerseys last year. Um, and, you know, we were printing it on all these customer supplied items, Nike and name brands and all this mm -hmm. stuff. And I think we had one point we had 40 different fabrics and name brands that we were putting jerseys together with right. their sponsors. They played all season, not a single one came off, uh -huh. not a single one washed bad. The color was perfect. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they do it. Right. It's pretty top secret, but they can do <laughs> so, both digital and spot yeah. color, mm -hmm. and they can match a Pantone. So wow. um, we include, uh, included that with screen printing and embroidery. That way, you know, where, where one is not good, we can use another mm -hmm. to kind of you know, do the whole thing. And just make sure that you can service the customers, right? Exactly. I mean, cool. we just did a t-shirt order where two of the t-shirts were screen printed and one of them was super color. Mm -hmm. And, awesome. you know, completed, completed the customer's uh, collection. It was, it was really awesome. That's, that's legit. All right, let's, let's move on to the next one. Number four. Okay, yep. so we talked about getting familiar with your brand and your color. You know, make sure you're thinking about your size and your quantities. Um, you know, knowing what colors you want in your ink. Number four may be the most important thing because this is make it or break it when it comes to getting t-shirts printed, dimension. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. you, when, when you're making a t-shirt, when you're screen printing, embroidery, whatever you're making, mm -hmm. like if you're gonna, you know, if you're gonna make a statue, like it doesn't yeah, matter yeah. what you're making, you're going from digital design to a real life product and real life has dimension. Mm -hmm. It has width, it has you know height. Um, and when you're when you're making your design, you gotta start thinking about things in dimension and inches. How big do you want your print on the front? Mm -hmm. Do you want it 10 mm -hmm. inches or 12 inches? And the reason why this is so important is if the, the product's right, the size is right, the ink colors are right, but the design is one inch big yep. instead of 10 inches big, yep. it's all messed up. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's all messed up. Like you have to start thinking about dimensions. And here's the number one thing where the shop usually makes the decisions. Most of the time, customers do not provide dimensions. Mm. So when they say, "Hey, can you make it a smidge bigger?" Right. I'm like, I'm like, what's a smidge? Yeah. Can you can you bring it down a tad bit and smidge it in?" And I'm like, "Dude, there's there's a thing called inches. Yeah. Like they exist for a reason. You want it six inches big or, or twelve inches? Mm -hmm. Like you give me a dimension and I'll make sure it's exactly on that dimension. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, is a lot of dimensions never given. Mm -hmm. So the salesperson or the designer or you know someone along the way is making the decisions for you, mm -hmm. and that can dramatically affect the final." Product. 
product? Will the print be too big? Will it be too small? Will it be in the wrong place? Yep. And here's the next thing, even once you get the dimension, we say, hey, I want this to be 10 inches wide. Okay, it looks perfect, okay, 10 inches, that's great. You now need to think about placement. Mm -hmm. when, we, when we screen print, we go from the collar seam and we measure down to the top of image. Usually it's you know two inches, two and a half, mm -hmm. three inches. There are some general guidelines, but I still wouldn't even go off of those. Right. I would say, what do you want? Mm -hmm. Where do you want the print on the shirt? Because if you have the right print, but it's on your belly, mm -hmm. it looks wrong. Yep, yep. If it's up on your neck, yep. it, it, it's all wrong. And so number four is you've got to think about dimensions. You need to own a measuring tape. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. there's no excuse. <laughs> this is a measuring tape, guys. This is a measuring tape. You <laughs> need a Pantone book and you need a measuring tape. You can go to any hardware store, pick this up for $6. You can hit Amazon and get it for $5. You got to do everything in dimensions. Like you can't be relative about it. You can't be vague about it. You got to know colors and you got to know measurements. And so if you walk into your shop, I promise you, if you've been ordering from a shop and you walk in with this, they are going to look at you different and be like, oh, my, what happened? Mm -hmm, yep. All of a sudden you're going to become their, their favorite customer. When you walk in and say, hey, here's my order. And if you're gonna email it, that's even better. Mm -hmm. The thing why some customers get a quote back in 15 minutes and some customers get a quote back in two weeks is because the amount of information they're providing in one shop. Mm -hmm. Some of my favorite customers to work with, I get an email that says, hey, I want the next level 3600. I want it in red. Mm -hmm. Here's my size breakdown, total is 100. Here's my artwork attached. If you open artwork, you're gonna see Pantones for each color. Here's my little mock-up I made. It says the dimensions on it. Can I have it by, you know, a week instead of two weeks. Most of the time I go, yeah, don't even worry about rushing. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll take care of it because you are giving us everything that we need. We don't have to have five phone calls about mm -hmm. it and two meetings about it. You gave us everything that we, now we get to go do our job mm -hmm. and get it done. And there is, there, it, it always happens. Customers that provide it all in one shop, their orders are done faster. Mm -hmm. um, you know, their orders are done better because we know exactly what they're looking for. Uh, we're more likely, you know, to, to reach out to them and say, hey, you know, um, here's a, the, the, here's a text picture of the first one. Mm -hmm. We think it looks great. It really just, you're setting it up for success because you're giving your printer everything he needs. And if you walk in on your next order and you give them all four of those things, you're going to probably blow their mind yeah. because yeah. very few customers provide uh -huh. it. And then I promise you, it will turn out to be the best order and the fastest order you've ever received. Most definitely. And I think, and I think an even bigger thing, guys, is if you get into the rhythm of doing this mm -hmm. now, it's only going to help your brand moving forward. Of course. Because if you're just doing like piecing things out with different shops and you're hoping that they get you the best job and then, like I said, things can change. That shop can end up closing or the guy doesn't, you know, he's too busy to handle you now. Now you're moving to a different shop mm -hmm. and you're starting from scratch. And now you're having to make all these adjustments, all this wasted time. And again, in the last call, we talked about the systems that you should have in place. And in this one, this is how you could see some of the systems that you'll need. Colors, dimensions, t-shirt uh, styles that you're going to need. Mm -hmm. These are all going to be super important for you guys to, to put together and have the system in place. So now you have a, a PDF with all, your, like, with all the blanks that you guys want to choose mm -hmm. for your brand. You have your PMS colors for different designs. And now you're able to compile this information and send it to multiple screenshots to get different quotes, uh, pricings. Absolutely. It's so much easier to streamline your, your business this way. So uh, let's, let's take it to the questions again, guys. For those of you guys that are watching, make sure you leave a comment down below with something that you'd like us to answer um, in this video or in a future video. So let's see. Uh, Someone we have, said, please explain Supercolor. Yeah, so, so Supercolor is a, we're actually working on a collaboration with them guys. It'll be live within the next like three weeks or so. I know you guys are going to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. uh, but Supercolor is essentially a heat transfer company. And uh, they're really changing the game with helping entrepreneurs, apparel brands, print shops. They're amazing. Everyone yeah. like in between essentially create very colorful uh, products at low minimums. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it comes across multiple applications, hats. Uh, shirts, jackets, bags, you name it. They can literally do almost anything with a heat press. Mm -hmm. So uh, so we'll be talking more detail about that, guys. And then, and then I saw a question in here, too. They said, what about, what about, um, what about like the different things compiled, like examples of each one? We're, we're going to be integrating that into the video as well. And for those of you guys that are watching and aren't a part of the Academy, make sure you guys go on over to the Academy, which is from thegroundupacademy.com. Click the link right there to learn more. Uh, it's consider subscribing. It's monthly cost or a yearly fee. And we do more trainings like this on a very personal uh, basis. So we got like 10, 15 people on the live call and we answer your questions mm -hmm. in a personal uh, community. And you guys can see the website here. You can go down and then hit that subscribe button at the bottom. And then from there, 
you can get your membership started. So we have a um, we have a money back guarantee for the year long program. If you guys are just joining for the month to month, then there is no uh, there is no refunds on that, guys, because we do give you a bunch of resources right out the gate. So you're going to include vendor resources, suppliers, mm -hmm. uh, discount codes, all kinds of things to help you run your business. So let's move on to the next thing. Yeah. So we have the four important things that you mm -hmm. just covered, and now we want to share three things that they need to know, right? Yeah, well, th that's the main thing is, is you get three things that are going to help you is really how to utilize the, those four things, okay? You, you, you can't leave it up to somebody else. Mm -hmm. If you leave it up to someone else, they're going to start, you know, they're going to start making decisions for you. And so um, what I'd recommend is you got to go out and get a Pantone book. You got to go out and get a, you know, a measuring tape. You got to go out and order samples. You got to start getting those already. And then you got to start utilizing those. Start thinking of things. Number one is start thinking things in dimensions. Mm -hmm. Start measuring stuff out. Go home and grab shirts that you have that are your favorite mm -hmm. shirts, a fan mm -hmm. shirt, a Quicksilver shirt, you know, something that you that you really like, and start thinking in dimensions. Mm -hmm. Measure stuff out. Start getting examples because when you start thinking in that way, it's gonna now it's gonna all start coming together. Yep. You yep. know, it's like when you if you if you're colorblind, all of a sudden you got color yep. and you yep. can see it all. You start realizing, oh, dimension matters. If it's this big or this big or the placement, and the best way to do that, start using go in your closet you know you already got yep. shirts in there you grab your measuring tape and you go and you start measuring okay i like how this print looks i like mm -hmm. how tall this print looks. Mm -hmm. i like the placement of this left chest yep. i mean left chest can go anywhere yep. around here yep. and the placement of a left chest is really critical so when you start putting dimensions together and you start realizing hey i know exactly the size i want when you give that to your printer and honestly when you design even taking a step back before you get to print shop you're thinking about dimension in mind and it has to be part of your design mm -hmm. process yep. even though we're you're doing we're doing design uh, digital design I mean you guys just built some um, yeah. some mm -hmm. um, what are the backdrops yeah, yeah. Uh, tell me about like yeah. you know choosing dimensions no mo most definitely so when it comes to dimensions it applies in anything so yeah we just did some backdrops and we did a cat and these design. are out of wood yeah, so this yeah, is a real wood. physical yeah. item a real physical making. so we designed it on the computer in a CAD system it's called SketchUp okay it's pretty cool for anything like 3d dimensional guys um, and yeah, we had to figure out exactly what we were thinking. So we, we measured with the, with the tape measure, how high do we want these mm -hmm. walls to go, right? So we did that, we input it into the system, and then the system kind of showed us where everything else kind of fell into place in terms of the beams and mm -hmm. sizes of the beams and how everything was going to attach. But for print brands, for, uh, for, for, for those of you guys that are starting up your brand, um, dimension also means like taking that similar approach. So one of the approaches yeah. that, that we took that really helped us especially when printing on like, or making embroidery files mm -hmm. for hats or anything, is designing it in, in either Photoshop or Illustrator to the dimensions that you're thinking. This mm -hmm. only really works on an eight by 10 though. So like smaller files or anything up to eight by 10. You could also do it with a bigger format printer, but for anything from home, all you gotta do is you take that design and then you say, if you're thinking it's gonna be two inches, mm -hmm. then you, you scale that design so it's two inches and then you print it out. On and a regular, piece, on of a regular piece of paper. Yeah. And then verify that it's two inches when it's printed out. Cut it out, Cut tape it, it out, on your shirt. Tape it on your shirt, <laughs> wear it. Wear and be it. like, yo, this looks good. Tape it on your hat, Absolutely. tape it on the bag. Like you can literally start to visualize like maybe it Absolutely. shouldn't be three, maybe it should be two, 2.25. Like mm -hmm. 2.25 looks a little bit better, right? Well, you, and what you're also gonna see is if there's small text yep. and it's too small, mm -hmm. you're, you're gonna see that. Exactly. Because when yep. you've got your 30 inch computer screen yep. in front of you and you're zoomed in at 200%, uh -huh. oh, that text looks great. But when yep. you get it to a final item yep. and you're like, I can't even read that. Exactly. There's no way that's gonna translate great on embroidery, mm -hmm. especially embroidery. You gotta keep it clean and simple. Text can only go so small before it just turns into a smudge, mm -hmm. you know, yep. a thread. And so you've got to, man, I, I can't even tell you. And the reason why I've learned all this is doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, doing it wrong. Customers would say, hey, I need, you know, when we started, I need, I need 50 t-shirts. Great. Uh, here's a design. It was, you know, I'm like, great. And then I would just say, okay, now um, I'm going to print it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll figure out the colors when I'm on press. I'll, I'll scale it out to whatever looks good in Photoshop. And then I'd give it to the customer and they're like, Oh yeah, you know it looks uh, it looks a little big, a little small, and it made me feel so bad. Right. You know what I mean? It made me. I said I went through all this work. I put ten hours into this mm -hmm. order, and then now the customer is not thrilled. I just right. wasted, and I I was so tired of like just not feeling good about mm. you know like I, I want to go to work every day because I want to do a good job yep, you know yep. and I want to I want to do something that matters, and so I started having to put parameters in place. Mm. I need to know, like your order will not go into production unless a dimension is set, mm -hmm. unless a Pantone is set, unless we know exactly what kind of shirt. And we're going to ask you all these things because we want to know your parameters. Mm -hmm. We want to know, we, we sincerely want our customers to be happy because mm -hmm. 
it's our time. It's our yeah. life that we're physically putting into making these products. And we want to make sure the customer is not just happy. We want to exceed expectations. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, why definitely. we do this. We Most want, definitely. We want to make them so happy. We're their only t-shirt shop. And they're telling you know everybody they know about them. And then they're leaving us a Google review. And because at the end of the day, we want to go home and just feel like we did a good job. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. And that's... So if you guys help the, the if you guys help the screen print shop that you're working with, they're going to help you put out the best product possible. Um, if you're going in there with, hey, I just want you to make this for me, it's going to be a shot in the dark if it comes out the way you want. Um, and if this is just an idea, something that you're testing out, then consider doing DTG, direct to garment mm -hmm. printing, for these one-off samples. Don't go and do a, a a 36 run if you don't know exactly what it is that we're talking about. We got a couple people. Uh, Connor Yams Yamsek. He's saying he's put, uh, print me printing my designs on paper right now to <laughs> to check the shirts I have <laughs> that are being done on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> that's a little late. <laughs> that's a little, you better. Print. I, I hope you. I, that's a little late, but I, I hope you got it. But the thing is, once you do these things, you're gonna look back and be like, "How did I ever do it without yep, yep. it?" I mean, I'll walk in, in in production right now and I'll see racks of screens that are ready for next mm -hmm. week, and every single you know for two or three screens, whatever's going in that job, I. See See a template tape to it yep, yep. and I said hey I've got to set my team up for success mm -hmm. my printers you know my press operators they want to do a good job they want to feel good they yep. don't want you know a customer upset at them or anything like that and in order as the owner to do this I've got to make sure these parameters are in place so the customers happy so that my my team feels like you know they're doing something that has value and it's mm -hmm. worth and they're excited about what they do every day um, you know and and it really all goes back into being organized and being precise mm -hmm. here is the honest truth if you don't make these decisions, someone else is going to make them for you. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, it might be their first day on the job. Yep. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, uh. it, might, it might be the salesperson's first day on the job and they're making the decision for you. Mm -hmm. it, it, it might be the press operator's first shirt that they're ever printing and they're making the decision right, for right. you. And the other thing that I, I do got to say, you know, that um, don't, don't depend on, your, on your, your, your print shop to make these decisions for you. And you know we, we try to be dependable as everything, but we do treat every job like it's a new job. Mm -hmm. And just because we did something on the last job doesn't mean it's automatically gonna be on the next job. Mm -hmm. So if you want neck labels or you want your, your, your shirts hang tag, just because your print shop has done it on the last 10, make sure you're always including them mm -hmm. all the details. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, when I started, we didn't have a lot of systems, and so people would be like, oh, you know what I like, just yeah. do that. Right. And I'm like, dude, I can't remember. Right. Because first of all, I, I wasn't organized, so I didn't write yeah. it down, you know, I didn't do all these things. <laughs> and the next thing is, if we're doing the first print run or the 50th print run, if you say it's Pantone 285, it's gonna yeah, always be Pantone 285. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We wanna, our, our, when we talk with our team, we wanna make sure the first batch of shirts and the hundredth batch of shirts all look the same. Mm -hmm. They could be side by side, they're consistent. And that to me is, that's one thing we strive for as a print shop is it's not good enough to do it once, mm -hmm. it's to be able to perform great over a long period of time right. and customers are looking for a consistent vendor. And, and, and that's yeah. the hardest challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Being organized, if, if there's a last minute color change, making sure that gets logged back in and that we're always using the same specs because when I, when I go and I look at orders that we did you know, 10 years ago right. or, you know, or eight years ago, I go, Man, how did we even get through the day? Right. We were making it up for you on right. the way. We were, we were making decisions for you, and we shouldn't have been doing that. We right. should have been asking the better questions. Mm -hmm. And so that's why you got to know color, you got to know dimensions, and you got to be precise. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about them getting scared. You know, don't worry that, oh, they're going to think I'm picky. Please be picky. Mm -hmm. Please mm -hmm. be picky. We need you to be picky. That's number three. Be decisive, be picky, be organized because. We're going to start this new phrase, be their favorite customer. Mm -hmm. Like when you, yep. the favorite customer, you know, as much as, you know, we, we want to love everybody, you're going to get special treatment. Mm -hmm. It's just that simple. Yep. If you walk in and you have everything together, you're going to get more attention. Mm -hmm. You're going to get special treatment. Your job is together. So it's more likely if there's a delay on another job, your job is going to, you know, mm -hmm. hey, well, these, th this is here. Yep. It's ready to go. If that job's delayed, let's throw this up and get it done a yep. week early it's going to change your life Almost definitely and it's something you can do and a lot of uh and and, and even in our uh, in our history whenever we had the pms colors like the the big difference mm -hmm. between it was we were trying to we were trying to match like hard good products like headphones oh, right okay. yeah, between yeah. between a hard good product a uh, a polyester fabric and a cotton right it wow. had to yeah, match yeah. pms between all of those so now when you go to your uh, when you go to your like whoever's printing your fabric or printing your t-shirts you give them that color now they know okay we got to hit this color mm -hmm. and then 
if it doesn't match exactly with the hard good color, now they at least can like troubleshoot. Oh, adjust it. And they can adjust yeah. it a little bit. They can say, okay, let's give it a little bit more red or let's take this down. And they could just test another swatch and now you match it dead on. And people absolutely. are like, how did you do that? Like it was like PMS colors, like I've, knowing absolutely. this. Yeah, so to answer, to answer a question that came in, uh, the, digital, the digital IG, is there only one type of Pantone swatch book or is there a specific one for screen printing? There's only one, right? As far as I know, Pantone You know, colors. this is actually an, uh, an uncoded. So this okay. is matte. I took this one because right. we used the coded and mm. I didn't want to mess okay. the shop up today. Uh -huh. We use coded uh, Pantone colors because they're more glossy and right. screen printing ink is, is usually more, more glossy. glossy. Right. I, I like the red in a coded um, Pantone book much better than an uncoded. Because mm. if you look at red, yeah. it almost has a little bit of a pinkish look. It does, yeah. And when, if you want that fire engine hot rod red, part of what makes red so good is a gloss. A mm. glossy red always looks better than a matte red because it's more vibrant. It looks more deep, mm -hmm. and so uh, and with screen printing, you know, a lot of times we're using plastisol. A um, you know a, a, a coded book is, is much closer. Mm -hmm. Oh much yeah, closer. I, I have noticed that there's a, the actual coded. I didn't think there was a difference between it, but it's just more of how it's actually. It, come it's out glossy. It's like the glossy. cover. Yeah, yeah, the, it's like this. the reason why th this uh, I grabbed this book is because yep. we never use it. <laughs> they <laughs> yeah, always send you two books. They right, send you right. a coded yep. and uncoded, yep. and we rarely use the uncoded because we're using plastisol. This, um, this one is more for like uh, actual fabric colors. Fabric's and, yeah. good. Sometimes yeah. water base yeah, because water. if it's matte, we'll mm -hmm. use it. We'll use the uncoated. Um, but it's just, you really want to make it more precise. And here's the other thing. If you're doing multiple products, if you're doing, you know, a hat and you're also doing a hard good, mm -hmm. if you can provide a sample to your printer, mm -hmm. not only say match this color, say here's the physical item it needs. Mm -hmm. If there, the more references, all this is doing yep. is giving your printer references mm -hmm. so that they can make a product that, you know, is on point and exceeds expectation. Like for instance, if you're trying to print a water label, right? So yeah. this is how the, this is how the PMS would work. And obviously the coated ones would have more of a right. gloss. Right there right there look at that 298 so, 298 yeah that's actually pretty cool or 299 yeah 298 is more of the more of the color you see guys that's how you can match colors between any product you have to bring it right up to the right up to this which is why it's a physical one yeah. it's also really good the main difference right here you have gloss you have matte. gloss yeah that's yeah. why if you want to match that color it's really important to be a glossy here's color. here's the next thing if you guys are working in photoshop if you open a, your color selector and you click picker, mm. I didn't know this for a long yep. time. It blew my mind. It switches from just a color, you know, color layout to a Pantone shades. Mm -hmm. um, of course, d due to your computer display and the brightness and what kind of computer, it, it can be slightly off, but yep. it gets you 99% yep. of there. Yep. It at least gives you a color to assign something. Yep. It's always good to double check in the book, mm -hmm. but most of the times if a customer is not giving us Pantones, we're going to go color selected. And then when we give them a template for approval, it's got Pantones. So mm -hmm. We say, please check this out. Um, another thing is if a customer doesn't give us dimensions, when we give them back a template, you know, it's got the t-shirt, yep. it's got the print, it says 10 by 12 inches, we also say, don't trust that. Mm -hmm. the, the, the outline, the t-shirt is there for a reference, but it doesn't tell you if it's a small or 2X. Mm -hmm. So what you need to do is take that dimension, 10 by 12, go take a measuring tape, lay out a shirt. Mm -hmm. You know, take a eight and a half by 11 paper, Add one more inch of paper onto yep, it, lay yep. it down, make sure it looks right because we're going from a digital design to a hard product yep, yep. and dimension matters a lot. Dimension matters, guys. Colors matter. Your, your, your details in every order are mm -hmm. going to play out for the long term. So if you're just getting started or if you're already in the printing process, consider these steps that we just discussed. And if you missed a couple, make sure you guys watch the replay and you check out the notes because we're going to categorize it by section. But you guys are going to want to watch this training to elevate your, your guys' brand screen printing so you can take your brands to new levels, so you can be a better customer, so you can be your favorite print be shop. Be the favorite customer. Yeah, be the favorite customer of that print shop. They'll take care of you guys. They'll give you the, they'll give you the VIP treatment, taking you into the back, showing you guys how they're Absolutely. doing their operation because they want to help you grow. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what we're here for too, guys, is to set you up to help you grow. So if, now that you guys have watched this training, you could go ahead and click on the link down below for a live print shop mentioned from the ground up as a code and you guys will get free neck labels on every order. I think the best part about what you guys do is the minimum quantities that you have at 34, right? 36, 36 three, dozen. Th uh, three dozen, 36 per, per design, but that's flat fees for anything of any color, right? Whether yeah, they want to do one color or eight colors. Yeah, we, we don't charge by the number of colors. So that's mm -hmm. one thing is we, we went through a huge upgrade automating our yep. whole screen making process. Mm -hmm. it, the screens are coded automatically. 
they're burned, it's all computer to screen. We got rid of the old transparency, which creates a higher uh, detail dot on half tones and everything like that. And then, you know, how we reclaim and wash and mm -hmm. our whole and you know uh, system, it saves water, it's, it's a lot better, and it really took our, our, our screen making to the next level. Um, but, you know, go, going, going back to that, I mean, you know, being decisive, having it all together is, is huge. It's, it's really, really important. You know, me and, uh, me and Agazi were talking about it, me and John were talking about it, you know, having shirts, because the thing is you're going to like, you're going to a hard product. Mm -hmm. And when you're having a hard product, uh, this is real. It, it, and then, you know what, it, it, it looks really good. And so um, the cool thing that we do about, so we got a t-shirt here. Yes. When we're doing a 36 piece minimum, we can print it on a t-shirt and a hoodie. Right, so right, not only right. are we mixing and matching shirt sizes, um, if your design, we'll put on a t-shirt, a hoodie, a tank top, a long sleeve. So now 36, you know, items could turn into four different products, mm, size across, breakdown. Across your sweaters. Across, across it. Your, so now right. on one order, you have a mini collection. Mm. And it really, you know, it really helps it kind of bring it alive, which right, is where yeah. a live print, yeah, shop. Live print shop. And so, because we understand when you're starting out, you need to make sure every dollar in turns into a dollar out. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. when you're buying product, get the m most, you know, put the same design on two different shirt colors yep. so you have options. And then, you know, I'll, well, the one thing is, the question I get more than any other is, should I be printing my own stuff? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, who's, I, yep, where, uh, seriously, raise your hand if you're sitting in your car watching this. Uh -huh. If you have that thought, oh, should I be printing my own stuff? Um, the answer is no. <laughs> it's not even a what if, it's no. Uh -huh. If you want to own a print shop, go print. Yep. Go print. Mm -hmm. If you want to be a clothing brand, go find a partner, let them make the investment in the mm -hmm. equipment, the time, the people, the people, the, the five years of doing it wrong, yep, let yep. them figure it out. Mm -hmm. Because here's the truth. If you print your own stuff and you mess it up, it's yours. Yep. <laughs> if, if another print shop prints it, and mess it up, you need to work with a shop that's going to stand behind their work mm -hmm. and they're going to be responsible for getting, mm -hmm. you, getting you a new batch. Yep. And that happens sometimes. Even yep. with everything together, there's still chances that happens. But if you work with a good shop, they're going to stand behind product mm -hmm. and they're going to eat it in and make it because they're interested in your long term growth. Because yep. as a clothing brand, you need to spend your time working on your designs, marketing, and getting it out there, doing photo shoots, interacting with your customers, mm -hmm. doing your social media, and let a print shop do its print shop yep. stuff. Most definitely. And and if you do want to start your own print shop, go work at a print shop first. 100%. Yeah, that, you're going to learn so much by just surrounding yourself with it every single day from cleaning the squeeze, from mm -hmm. cleaning the screens to actually laying down the inks. You're going to learn a lot if you work at a screen well, print even, shop. Even but. if you want to do a clothing brand, yeah. go do an internship. Yep. Yep. Go ask somebody, you know, because it, I mean, we talk about these four things, but until you see them in action, mm -hmm. you realize, oh, this is why my shop makes some decisions and don't. Mm -hmm. Call a shop up, see if you get an internship. I mean, if someone called me today and said, hey, I just want to come fold shirts. Mm -hmm. uh, don't pay me, you know, yep. I'll show up for three hours. I just want to see how it all works. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, dude, I definitely need someone to help yeah. shirts. <laughs> I mean, what I did for three months is I showed up every day, make him a minimum wage. Mm -hmm. It cost me almost more in gas to right. go out there every day, but I, I wasn't there to make money. I was mm -hmm. there to learn. Mm -hmm. I was there because I said, I want to have a good understanding of how this process works um, so that I, 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 you know, I don't want to jump in it and be over my head. Mm -hmm. And so really, if you can talk, talk to one of your local shops, say, hey, I, I, can I just stand there? Can I just watch stuff being printed? I'm not going to mess with anything i'm not going to take pictures i just want to understand how a screen is made how it developed mm. uh, you know hopefully if it's a good shop they'll say they'll at least give you a tour yep. so that because i always every single time we have a new customer come in we give them a tour right and one of my new salespeople said hey why do we always give them a tour and i said because we want to help the customer become our favorite customer. Mm. If they understand how it works, mm -hmm. they're going to start working it on how it works yep, yep. instead of trying to force things that don't make sense. So mm -hmm. we walk them in, hey, these are these are screens. Mm -hmm. There's no magic printer that makes yep, t-shirts yep. <laughs> as much as I wish. Parts. I mean, DTG is almost there, but there's uh -huh. still no magic thing that just makes shirts and makes it look perfect. There's a process, yep. ink mixing, screen making, getting it set up, doing test prints, making sure the design and the colors are in registration. Mm -hmm. It's a process, so design for the process. Yep. Yep. And so that's, you know, that, that's kind of what you, you know, what you get to hear from someone who's been doing this for 13 mm -hmm. years. And the reason why we ask the questions is we want our customer happy. Mm -hmm. Because we know a happy customer turns into more work and I like to feed my kids. All right, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody, everybody's got to make money. We, they, they help you make money by, by making sure that your designs come to life the right way. And like you mentioned, for those of you guys that don't have the ability to come down and do business with them personally, we're actually going to be working on a two-part video where we're going to be talking a little bit more in detail about some of the stuff that we discussed today. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that video launching on the channel. It'll be the next video that launches, um, which is, which is going to be an amazing, impactful, I personally learned a lot about the screen printing shop mm -hmm. based on how well you guys were set up. Like I've been to a lot of different print shops, but this one was a little bit unique, like a little bit different than anything I've seen before. 
and we take you guys in that's inside of that operation and really show you guys how they do high volume printing but as well as minimum orders like mm -hmm. you guys are able to do thousands of orders or even just 36 and yeah, like yeah. service all size of customers and and, uh, and, 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 and you guys are doing a great job at that, man. So that's why We're I wanted to bring on, you on yeah. today and, I appreciate and it. just like uh, share your knowledge. I know it's gonna take a lot of brands far. Mm -hmm. I know after watching this video, a lot of people are gonna be so much better positioned to take their next order, to start with the uh, PMS codes. They're gonna be Use like, yo, yeah. I had Use no them. idea I could match this exact red on my favorite shirt that's, and not put it on my, on I my shirt. <laughs> all you people that own Jordan shoes, uh -huh. I have people, hey, I need that new Jordan red. I'm right. like. Dude, I don't know Jordan yeah, shoes. Right. Pantone that shoe. Yeah. Pantone that shoe. Pantone yeah. that little rubber jelly thing in yeah. there that you want to match the Bluetooth. Use this because it exists. Yeah. Someone in the 60s solved this problem right. for us. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah they, it's already they, there. They did a really good job at it. And, and somebody asked, why does it cost so much? Because it solves a lot of problems. It, it does. <laughs> it is worth it. If you're and because say, there's proprietary. It is. But yeah. if you're going to spend $100 on something, skip Starbucks for the next 10 days. Yep, yep. Get your Pantone book. Go get your measuring tape. You know, your dad probably already has yep. one of these sitting in the drawer yep. somewhere. Go, you know, go grab this and really start thinking about a designer. This is going to elevate you from someone who orders t-shirts to someone that's developing a brand and is now building authority and is doing a great job on it. And, you know, unfortunately, I learned it the wrong way. But please, save yourself time. Mm -hmm. Save yourself misprinted orders. Try this out. Go on, you know, go on Next Level's website today, Bella mm -hmm. Canvas. Go pick out some shirts. Order some samples. Go pick out some inks. Use your printer at home, print out some yep, tests, yep. go through the whole process, and then it's going to start, it's going to do something in your brain to start mm -hmm. thinking about it in a greater, you know, greater way. Most definitely. And I think we got time for one last question. How do I and others stop being afraid? High school and university was a good couple years ago. Um, age is feeling. So how do I, how do I stop being afraid? You know, that, that really, I think that really starts with you just taking action. I think uh, I think afraid is like you're overthinking it sometimes. Yeah. At least at least whenever I'm afraid of something, I think I overthink it instead of like putting action to it and seeing. You know what? It's not that daunting. It's a little more comprehensible. What about you? Um, fear How and you faith. Fear? Yeah. fear and faith are the same thing. Mm. Like that. That's what it is. Fear and faith are on the same side of the teeter totter. Faith is you believing something good is going to happen, and fear is you believing something bad is going to happen. Mm. Neither of them have happened yet. Right, right. They haven't right, happened. Right. That's a good point. Like tomorrow has not happened. Next year has not happened. They're both on the same side of the teeter totter. And if you're going to just be negative about it and you're going to lean into faith, your life is going to tilt that way. Mm -hmm. And then you know if you're going to lean into fear, but if you want to start saying, you know what, next tomorrow can be different. I can develop this brand. I love it. I'm excited about it. You start you know going to the other side of the teeter totter, and you start seeing that your life starts tilting. Mm -hmm. That way, everything you do in your life starts tilting in the direction you want to go when you start leaning in it by faith. Right. And I'll tell you what what changed my life in uh, I want to say 2015 is I, I found out my you know we were gonna have our first baby, mm. and I just knew that my life was just not where I wanted it to mm. be. I, I I my business was growing, but I you know. Um, you know, my wife was pregnant and her, her driver door broke on her car. Mm. And so she's pregnant and she has to go through the other, oh, the passenger oh, side to, to lock her, oh. to lock the door for her car. And I thought, I, I want my life to have a, a wife to have a better life than this. And, and I, I just sat down and I said, like, I'm going to spend the next 90 days and I'm going to write my goals out every day. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this is like, this changed my life. I, I said, I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be a dad in about three or four months. I want my kids to have the same opportunities my parents gave me. Mm -hmm. I got to step my life up. And so I would write my goals down. And really what it was is if you want to get over fear, your why has to be so strong. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. you have a daughter and you, mm -hmm. oh, something yeah. about, yep. I mean, you know, you might have why, but something mm -hmm. about having kids, yep. it gives you a whole nother level of why than you even have in your own ability is because you want to take care of them and provide mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. And that was my why. So I got 90 days. I'm about to be a dad. <laughs> I got to step my life up. Right. I had a great dad. You know, right. I had a, you know, a really good dad. I wanted my kid to have the same thing. And so every day I literally bought a stack of loose leaf paper. You know, I said every day I'd grab a page, you know, I'd wake up at 5 30, 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. I would fill that whole page up. I'm telling you, the first 15 days, my goals were so wonky. Right, right. Were, and you, and you start to see them after a bit. But like, they, they started yeah, coming yeah, together. But yeah. at first, they were wonky. Like, I was like, oh, you know, like, uh, you know, I want to be a robot. Like, right. I want to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, random ass goals. I want to a Lamborghini. <laughs> like, yeah. I, you know, I want to go skydiving. I'm like, these goals are, you know. <laughs> yeah. But the problem is that you got to get it from your thoughts to the paper. You got to yep. solidify your reason why you're doing this, your goals. You can't just have, if you have a bunch of ideas, you're just having tactics mm -hmm. and your goals give your life strategy. Yep. 
and how to go in the same direction for a long time. And that's how we built our company. We just kept doing the same thing for 13 years. Mm -hmm. Other opportunities, mm -hmm. other things came, we didn't do them. Yep. We did this and yep. we got good at this. And you know, about 20 days, 25 days into doing my goals, it started getting like, like sharp. Mm -hmm. I started realizing I got eight things I want to do. Yep. I don't want my wife to ever, you know, have to come over the passenger seat again to open the door in her car. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I said, I'm gonna buy my wife a nice car. Right. I'm gonna buy her a car that's gonna fit two car seats. You know, mm -hmm. like I'm gonna do that. I end up saying, you know what? Um, I, 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 you know, I was in a bad car accident right before this happened mm -hmm. and the car that I loved was totaled. Wow. And I ended up driving a car that I hated, but right. it was the only thing that I could yeah. afford. And I said, I'm gonna buy, you know, I'm gonna buy myself a certain car. I'm gonna buy, a, you know, a house, a certain square footage. And then I started working it all backwards. Like my goal was, I want to do fifty thousand dollars a month in sales, mm -hmm. and we had three employees at the time, mm -hmm. and it took me six months to hit that goal. Mm -hmm. Six months. Mm -hmm. First month we hit twenty nine thousand. Right. We're barely barely making it. Mm -hmm. the next four months we hit forty thousand. No. Just to right, the line, right. forty eight thousand, no. forty seven. Finally, on the sixth month, we hit 51,000, mm -hmm. 52,000, and I promise we never hit less than 50,000 ever again. Wow. It's because it just started focusing, and because once you get your goals super clear, mm -hmm. you start working backwards. Yep. What needs to happen for me to get my clothing yep. brand there, you know, to make this sort of income for my family? Mm -hmm. You start breaking, and I had to break it down into daily bite sized hits. Yep. If I'm going to do $50,000 a month, I need to do, you know, almost $2,000 a day, $1,500 mm -hmm. a day in sales. And I would go from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., I'd be emailing customers. Mm -hmm. If you have a shirt order coming yeah, up, like yeah. if there's anything like I got to hit this goal and it pushed me to the next level and, you know, growing. And then all of a sudden, like fear just, it didn't matter. Right, yep, you know what yep. I mean? Like you're thinking about your daughter, mm -hmm. you're thinking about your, you know, your kids, you're thinking about taking care of, you know, you want to eat what you want to eat, live where you want to live, live the life that you want to live. Fear cannot control you because mm -hmm. if you let it, it's going to teeter your life that way. And honestly, like. I think I believe that God made all of us for a reason mm -hmm. and that, you know, there's there's really like you should have the best life, yep. but you got to work your butt off and go yep. earn it. And that's what five talents is, right? That's what I'm wearing Absolutely. right now. I'm wearing the five talents brand. That's you a good plug. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's perfect, man. It really it really symbolizes who this guy is and, and what in and his faith and in our faith. You know, like I think that's what we related to a lot, especially mm -hmm. going into your operations and seeing how you treat your employees and how and how people really are. Right. Everybody yeah. is like feels like a part of a family. And because uh, it is, it is, it is, it's it is. a faith-driven I mean, business, which is awesome, man. I, I see my, you know, workers or my team more than I see my, my kids sometimes, right, you know. Yeah. And so I decided, like, we're gonna have a blast at this. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have a great time, you mm -hmm. know. And so, uh, but that's it. I mean, we started this brand Five Talent. It's based off the parable of the talents mm -hmm. in uh, Matthew 25. And the whole point of that story, to sum it up, is you know. The master gave some of his servants different, you know, talents and some of them used them and some of them didn't. And the mm -hmm. ones that used it, you know, it turned into more. And the one who had five talent turned into 10 talent. And that's all we're trying to do. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, me and you have a similar background yeah. where, you know, we, we just been kind of, we really don't, you know, we yeah. just keep showing up yeah, every day. We, we keep do. doing our best. We know we want to do something great and we keep showing up. We know that the more people that we help, that's mm -hmm. the avenue that's going to take us to really, you know, be able to supply our families with the life mm -hmm. we want to live. And, as you start growing, you realize it's not about you. Mm -hmm. I want yep. to have a work environment where people love going to work every mm -hmm. day because happy people make good product. Mm -hmm. And you know, and uh, I love what I do, and I've had a great opportunity to work with a lot of people. And you know, I love working with you guys. And mm -hmm. I feel like the more you start going down that path, it starts attracting you to, to people that are also you know going in the same direction. So yeah. I really appreciate you having me a part of this today. No, oh, thanks, man. Thanks for coming on, guys. And thank you for everybody that watched on the live. Make sure you guys are checking out the, the brand Five Talent Clothing. You guys are checking out the links to a live print shop using coupon code from the ground up to get free neck labeling check out the academy and more importantly stay tuned for the next videos that are coming live on this video which we're going to cover a two-part series with a live print shop we're going to be taking you guys and showing you some things that you probably haven't seen before so we're, we're pumped for that we're pumped to show what uh, to show you guys how that video came out we're working on it it's almost completed and uh, we'll see you guys on the next live stream perfect thank Peace. you guys